Book TV attended a book party for Colonel Lee Ellis, a former POW who spent over five years imprisoned in Hanoi and camps in other cities. Party attendees include Senator John McCain and Orson Swindle, former commissioner of the Federal Trade Commission. This is about 45 minutes. Well, hello, Admiral. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. My wife, Donna. Hi, Donna. I don't think we've met before. No, I don't think so. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Jimmy Coy's book event or something. That's right. That's right. And then I saw you once at Perimeter Church. That's right. You're looking great. You're looking great. Looking young. How you hold it up? I was a little concerned last night, this morning. I didn't sleep so well last night, but it's it's going well. Very well. Thank you. Are you moving about the land? I am. I am covering the land. Washington, is that that Indianapolis tomorrow. Yeah. So. Someday when it settles down, you have to tell me what it's all about. I'm in the process of starting to write one myself. But I'm, uh, well, I've got a, my, my managing director for my publishing company has done a great job. Okay. I'll talk to you. you need to get me out of here. Hey, good to see you, Tom. How are you doing? I've got something from an author, a similar author, but not quite the same. Okay. Margot, she's been wanting to give you one of her books. Oh, wonderful, time. wonderful. Yes. I remember that one. I remember this one, yes. I said, well, I'm going to see him tonight. She spoke uh, there. She spoke. How's she doing? Well, she's going to do his chemo thing. Yeah. Now. So tomorrow yeah. she's got another chemo thing. So. Oh, wow. But she wanted to be here. If this would have been yesterday. She yeah. was doing okay. Okay. So we'll give her our love and tell her oh, she's absolutely. in our prayers. And I thank her so much for this. I appreciate you uh, letting me know. Thank you. Thanks, about halfway through I appreciate the book, you being I will give you a little blurb. Okay, good. Maybe. Yeah, they're, yeah. yeah they're good. And can we use it? On oh, you can use it wherever you want. Anyway, I'll let some of the I'll get right to you. Hey, Judy, how are you? Hello. Good to see you. Hey, Mel, good to see you. Thank you for coming out. Good to see you all. When we got your um, the last message, it sounded like we had gotten a previous message, but we didn't. Oh, you did? Well, you were supposed to. You were on the list, and your address was on the we mailing did. list. We didn't. So we got it. I probably sent it to the wrong place. No, uh, I had the mic. Thanks. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Well, great. great. This is a good event. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Let me grab another yeah, interview. Absolutely. I didn't know what this was going to be like. This. this is oh, you know you're excited about this. I am. Uh, I don't get excited very easily, but I'm kind of excited about this. Yeah. It's like uh, you know, you just keep plugging away on a dream. And, and uh, I've been surrounded by some really good people to help. I have a really good team that's working uh, both the book and the PR and all this. Yeah, and the event. Consistency over the long haul. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what I do. I try to every day just move the ball down the field. One big, just every day. You know, I feel like when I saw the price on Amazon, they had dropped down too. I thought, oh my goodness, that's not right. You know, and then I told me, I'm not going to worry about this. I have to worry about money, and I've been paying all the bills, and I'm not going to worry about money. You know, it'll take care of itself. Turn it over. Yeah. 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 Well, you got a, lot, a lovely crowd here. We're looking forward yeah. to talking with Mary. I thought I know that Tom Spinner. She is over the, the, the San Antonio crowd over there. Joe uh, Durego, the guy who was back to us, he was in my squadron. Now he's a Merrill Lynch, uh, Morgan Stanley guy in San Antonio. Oh, really? And he's already thrown two big book parties in San Antonio for his clients. Luncheons and when, uh, uh, parties. And they're in the future? Or they're, no, they've already, already had them. Now he's got that book all over San Antonio. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So when are you going to speak? Yeah. Right after McCain. Right after McCain. Uh, I have a script and written out. I've gone over trying to get it down in my head, and I don't know if it will get there or not, but I'm going to just say it. You know, I'm not going to read it. Yeah. It's in your heart. Now. Yeah, yeah. So if I can just have a half a glass of wine, I'll come. <laughs> well, that's what you Thank need. Thank you. Then. Please. Uh, yeah, we'll Let me just take you all over and introduce you to me. Got friends who want to. Hey, hi. I'm Is Michael it? Dowling's sister. And I'm Mike Dowling. Oh, there you are. Yeah, yeah. Hey, lady, good to see you. Good to see you, Diane Brown. I'm Diane. Hey, Diane. Yeah, I saw your name. I know who you are. I loved it. Thank you. We have a Congressman Brown here tonight, a lady. Oh, so right. that's when you. Oh, maybe we could get I hadn't seen you when. Oh, we could get yeah, we yeah, that's right. Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Wonderful event. Looking yeah, it's good. going well. Yes. Good. Going well. Yeah, good. and it's good to see you. And wonderful we'll be here for a while. Good. Good. Yeah. good. Yeah. Well, yeah. enjoy. Yeah. Mary's right over there visiting some friends from San Antonio. Who is? My wife, Mary. Oh, good. She, I know she's she over there. I'd love to she's see. She's right over at that table, right over there. So 
coming by. Thank you, yeah. thank you for coming. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. So? So, yeah. It's finally come. Hey, hey, Bill, E. L. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. I'm waiting for a copy of the book, but uh, well, you'll get one tonight. Yeah, guarantee. Tell me about. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what what prompted you to write this. Exactly. I'm just always admired the leadership. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I wanted to uh, say hi. I have to interrupt it, but I have my oldest son is in the hospital. Oh, so I just, I'm sorry. I need to interrupt. So I just want to say hi. Thank you. Then I'm going to. I have to run right out. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Phil Gertz. Hi, Phil. Oh, my goodness. I interrupted an interview. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Thanks for coming. I want you to meet Aaron Essendorf. He's from the NAC. Veterans here. Yeah. The, the leadership we had there was so in, awesome. Yeah. Incredible. I mean, there's not many situations where you have guys that get up as leaders every day and take torture to do their job. And they stayed true to the course. You know, when everything got burned away, the real authentic men stood up and they were great leaders. So that made a great impression on me. I was a junior oh, no. guy. And then uh, I've been a leadership consultant for 15 years. And in the Air Force, I was a leader. I learned a lot there, made a lot of mistakes, you know. And as people would say, why don't you write a book? And I said, well, we don't need another autobiography about the POW. And then I realized that I really did have something unique to contribute. I had a passion for leadership. I understood the POW situation. And I've written two books before, so I thought I could tell this story and make it something that we could really make a difference. What, what's the most significant quality that makes a leader based on what, what you have in the book? Uh, the most, the first one is you have to be authentic. Yeah. You can't be a phony. You got to be. You got to walk the talk. You got to. You got to be vulnerable. And sometimes you're wrong. And sometimes you make mistakes. That's what great leaders do. Uh, but it, and you have to. You, when it comes time to doing the tough, hard things that are honorable, you have to lean into the pain of your fear and go do. You have to have the courage to go do what you need to do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know. I have to coach myself sometimes to have the courage to do what I ought to do. Well, when you when you think in those terms, do you think of what you do, how that will affect other people? Is that kind of the, the leadership? You know, you, you have to do this because... No, I'm first looking at what I know the standard is of what a good leadership is and what integrity and character is. And if I'm doing that, then they're probably going to respect me to start with. Now, I still have to pay attention and then I turn to develop other people. I want to develop people that are better than me. They can do my job better than me. Because I'm going to move on someday. And free them to go be great leaders somewhere. Either in my place or somewhere. Well, how did your POW experience help you to be a better leader? What, was, what were the key things? Well, when I came home, I'd been gone five and a half years. And uh, I'd been in combat. Uh, I'd never been in an operational unit other than combat. Okay? And then I took three months off. And then I got promoted when I got home two years early to major because of my POWs, what I'd done in the camp. So now I'm eight years behind my peers. It was that stuff that I learned there about leadership that enabled me to compete and stay up with uh, my peers and have a great Air Force career. So. Something about that experience gave me an understanding about what leadership was about, that I was able to do the technical stuff and stay up. Yeah. So, well, how did you get all of these uh, former POWs and McCain and Alvarez? I remember Alvarez, was, he was like, wasn't he the longest? Eight and a half years. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible story. Yeah. Well, we're loyal to each other, and I think they believed in the vision for this book, too. Yeah. Yeah. I had a real good friend who was a POW in Vietnam. His name was uh, General Paul Baker. Do you know him at all? Baker? Yeah, Paul Baker. I know Dave Baker. Yeah, Dave, Dave Baker. Baker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was an, he, he died a couple of years ago. Yeah. He was an amazing guy. Right. We he missed was, him. <coughs> yeah, he was, yeah, he was a POW. He was yeah. one of the last POWs for Baker. That's right. That's right, yeah. Thank you so much for coming. I'm going to circulate. McCain's going to be good. Senator McCain's going to speak, and I'll yeah, speak shortly. Okay, good. Good. Sorry, I keep running off. That's all right.
Hey, Judy. Hi. How are you? Good, Good. to see how you. How are you? Congratulations. Doing well. Doing well. Oh. Hi, Sheila. Good like, to see you again. I liked your book. I keep telling Judy to read it. Yeah, but I'm I going can't to. Get her to do it. I can't get me to do it. I signed a book. I shouldn't next. have done this, but last month. You don't remember. Hey, Jerry. How you doing? How are you? Oh, wow. Jerry. Great to see you. Jerry. Hey, hey Carol. Thank you. Thank you. I thought you were the worst guy we ever saw. I was. I was signing books, and this guy said, "Sign this book." to Carol, read the damn book. He said, she's got stacks of books. I said, I can't do that. She, she, he, he, does she have a great sense of humor? He said, yeah, I said, I did. And then after that, I said, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. I'll put yours at the top now, though. Sheila, we were together on the boat cruise at the POW reunion up here in 2006. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and Dick, Dick Stratton was sitting on my right, and you on my, uh, my left, and you were on my right. Well, yeah, you that met, was a great event. You met, I just met Judy uh, years ago. Many, years many ago. years yes. ago. Yeah. How have you? I don't. I'm amazed that you've made it. How are you? Yeah. How are you? With him. All these years. years. <laughs> All these years. <laughs> Actually, I made it. I made it for more than four. So good. Good you for can you. Make it, yeah. So you know he's entertaining. Yeah. Oh, he's entertaining. Yeah. That's why I said it was okay to be in solo because in solitaire because I had such good company. You you dominated my book a little too much, but it was it was okay. It was okay. And your story. Have you seen your story? I have not. No. Yeah, I got the story about Barney in there. Oh my God! And about and about, oh, yeah, yeah. and about days of wine and roses. That I don't how remember. you told it. You when you first when you first remember. moved into uh, beer hall with us, uh, you started telling us movies. Right, I remember that. But I don't and you that told particular. days of wine and roses, okay. and you told it so accurately. Really? You said that you had worked in a the movie theater growing up, and you'd seen that these movies over and over many times working in the movie theater and you told the story and you the part about Jack Lemon finding the liquor in the greenhouse and rolling around and getting drunk because he had kind of been on the drive oh gosh and you told it so accurately when I saw the movie it just blew me away you did a fabulous job they, uh, yeah. they must have remade them from the time I came home <laughs> no it was out there I went and found it because I wanted to see it Actually, yeah. you, you, didn't, you didn't, well, I don't know if you ever heard yeah. the story. Sunshine Jackson, did you ever hear that? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. But I, I never I went to I wish that I had your, <laughs> his thousand line iambic pentameter poem, that's what I wish I had, the one you wrote in the tank. Yeah. But you know, every day, Jim, the poem, the law, mm -hmm. it's coming home more and more and more. I, I've got it somewhere at home. You I, know, I, I, I have it. I have, you, you gave me permission to Mary some, made it in calligraphy, yeah, and I've got it. You do? Yeah. Oh. I, I want to be able to put some it on my website. Some traveler of a future time may pass through a deserted mess, meadow where perhaps he may find a pile of broken stones and stoop to ponder over these ruins alone. <laughs> nearby, half hidden by the grass, hey, this is my wife, he'll see. Yeah, nearby, the traveler may see, half hidden by the grass, a piece of frieze, upon whose face by long dead sculptors here, inscribed a word you cannot understand. The name of him they worship here, he'll say, and stand up from the stones and walk away. What was the name the future, future traveler saw? The word inscribed upon the stone is law. Jerry Benanzi. Hi, how are you? Jerry was with us for five years and plus a little. And uh, he's from New Jersey. And he always told us about this yellow Impala convertible. 64, 64. yellow Impala convertible. We've been home a month. I'm driving down Interstate 85 into Atlanta. I see this older Italian looking couple driving a yellow Impala 64 convertible. I pull up beside them on Interstate 85 and flag them over to pull over to the side of the road. And they did. They thought they were being hijacked. And I pulled over and they, and I got, and they got out and I said, are you the Bonanzi's from New Jersey? And they said, yes. And I said, well, I lived with Jerry in Hanoi. <laughs> and, but, it, but it wasn't Jerry? It was no, his parents my driving parents. his car. The car his I knew it wasn't Jerry. It was his parents. And they were going to Montgomery to see you in Montgomery. Yeah. Well, what they were going story. to see uh, somebody else, I think. But, uh, but not and me. He said, there. Jerry said his dad told that story for years. Yeah, many years. Yeah. And Jerry, did you spend the remainder of uh, career in the Air Force? I did. And you're living in New Jersey now? No, no, we're living in <laughs> right down the street here in Springfield. 
In Virginia? Or? Yes. I live in Northern Virginia myself, Harley. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're and cool. how about you, Carol? Uh, we, you um, live with him? Yeah. 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 Usually. For, for quite a while. I got a circulate. Good just wanted you to do. introduce you, my and, good and, Italian and, friend. And you know, you know about the story of Ron Putnam and his wife, right? Yes, I do. The bride. I hope. In fact, there he is right now. Ron, how are you doing? Karen, Where's your bride? She could not be. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking forward to meeting her. She looks forward to meeting you. She's still at work at 10 after 5 when I was leaving. I understand. Home. I understand. She had an emergency. She feels real bad because this would have been a wonderful time. Yeah. But it'll, it'll happen. Yeah, it'll happen. I'll, we'll, we'll get together and go to special. dinner sometime. You're very special to her. So when you're in town, you know, please, yeah. let's do that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that'd be good. And thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you for I being here. To hearing what yeah. you have to say. Oh, uh, you know, I've got six pages of notes and speech there, well, which I'm not going to give. Oh, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I look forward to it. And again, it's a wonderful evening. Thank you. It is. It's exciting, and we have so many friends here. POWs, businessmen, high school classmates here. I met one of your Sunday POW school friends. Uh, students. Again, one of your Sunday school students from Georgia that where you used to live. I think he was a Sunday school well, gentleman. White. Oh here. yeah, yeah, Jack Hodge. Right, he's a right. business man. He was in my class, Sunday school class. Right, right. Yeah, he he loves the book and he's actually been promoting it all over the country. So. Last well, Yeah. So he said, I'm going to be there. Well, Karen sends her regards. Thank you. She feels like she knows you, even though she's never met you. Right. And so. Uh, at some point when you come up here, please let I me will. know. And we'll, I will. We'll, 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 we'll I'll look forward to it. We'll right. go to the Chinese place. Love it. <laughs> That's Take care good. Of that was good. I'm going to be steaming over here. Okay, good. There's Joe Shad. That's the guy that made me look good. And there's my buddy. Did you meet my wife yet, Tom? Well, here she is. Mary, Tom and Maria Owens. Very pleasure to meet you. We were... Um, we were we flew F fours together in George, Air Force Base. Went through survival school together. F fours at George Air Force Base in the high desert of California. Went to Vietnam. I went. He went to Cameron Bay. I went to Da Nang. He made it back. I got shot down and captured. I have a couple of favorite memories though. When he, uh, or two things. One is, and I know I know he remembers this, but but uh, Lance Sijon, who's died in Hanoi. Medal of Honor winner, and Lee and I were good friends, George, and we played golf with my father-in-law. Right, at, I remember. In Hesperia. Oh yeah, I remember. The next thing I remember, after we split up and years passed, is I was stationed at Nellis when we had the first that's real Las, that's Las River Vegas. Rat reunion. And that's when we had a big party. Oh, it was big. Do you know big. what the River Rats are? That's another story, but... They, the River Rats is the Fighter Pilots Association. Yeah. And if you flew north of the north of the Red River, yes, you were one. Yes. So he was. He came walking through the front door, and I was in charge of the command post area. I said, "Lee Ellis, report to the command post." He, <laughs> yeah, that was a big, he remember me quite big well. night. A big night. Yeah, it was. It was, it was exciting to be there. Nice to see you. We really appreciate you all being here tonight. Well, and our buddy uh, would have been here, I think, if he hadn't gone to Kansas. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. which is exciting. Uh, one of our peers is General uh, Richard Myers, who was chairman of the Joint Chiefs. And uh, he, he regretted that he couldn't come. He already had a commitment to go back home to Kansas. But uh, he flew F-4s and same time you did and I did. And, uh, he flew. He went a little higher than we did. Well, it depends on your point of view. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. No. Yeah, he did. He's a wonderful man. Uh, coincidentally, he's one of, uh, one of his many jobs. He's the chairman of the board for the USO. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, his office is in my building. Okay. Up on the 12th floor, much loftier than mine. Mm -hmm. And he stopped by the other day. And he's, oh, oh, I think he's on the fourth floor. So he hops off. Oh, it's where are you? <laughs> so we have a nice job. Good, nice, good. Nice job. Well, you tell him we thought about it. I appreciated his service. Because he, uh, he did yeoman duty there for a long we time. We flew together again. Um, I, I went back on my second. 
you might not remember this, but I went back on my second tour at Pratt in 1972 when the war mm -hmm. started again, mm -hmm. air war. And uh, he was flying weasels in Kadena, I think. Mm -hmm. And he deployed a squadron down to mm -hmm. Karate. So we we didn't fly closely together at that point in time because he was a weasel. Right. We had F4C weasels. Right. So we did some flying there together. We've been stationed together several times over the years. And yeah. now he, he lives right down the street from us. Uh, and we see him on occasion. As a matter of fact, we had a good deal going for a while. He, uh, he's chosen because of medical reasons, not mental reasons, to not drink. And so there was a New Year's Eve party that we went to every year. And I said, well, I'll drive out if you'll drive back. No, I'll drive. I, you drove last year. So it's not bad. You got the retired chairman of the Joint Chiefs staff come by your house, pick you up to escort there you, you and be the yeah. designated driver. Yeah. That's good. That's but the good. one thing we did was we always got lost yeah. <laughs> on the way home. Well, it's good seeing you guys. Thank good you again you for too. coming. It's exciting. Very exciting. Mr. Campbell, Lee Ellis, I want to say hi. You, sir. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Orson said he knew you. He remembered you. He admitted it? Yes, sir. He did. He thought highly of you, as a matter of Austin's fact. Austin's a great man. He's he is. He's a great man. Well, he know. said you were, so. No, he's a great makes man. I'm going to buy your book. Are you selling it tonight? We're giving it away tonight. You you'll have to, yeah, you'll have to go to. We, everybody gets a copy with a placard from signed by myself and McCain. Kind of a commemorative really? book. Wow. And then uh, you can go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble to okay. where yeah, get them. Good. Part of leading with honor, either one. Well, okay. now what are you doing now? You speaking a lot? I'm doing a lot of speaking. I'm so, still doing some leadership consulting and executive great, coaching. Great. Um, I'm running that business and the speaking business. You're getting through to people. I am. That's the main thing. I think so. Uh, sometimes, you know, we're all we don't change easily. We're all hard headed. I know. I know. But uh, you know, I figure if you can just get one thing. If each person get one thing out of the book or out of a speech that will make a difference, yeah. then it's worth it. Good attitude. Yeah. Well, thank well, thanks. you for coming. Good yes, sir. My pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Orson's here. Would you like something to drink? <laughs> Senator Carl, you How are you doing? I met you a lot. You're a great man. Thank you. I'm glad you know that. Before you go too far, this is Jerry Venanda. You remember Jerry from the prison And this is his wife. Nice to see you. And I'll let you do the rest of the time. Nice to meet you. Ron flew helicopters. God bless you, sir. Pete Peduzzi. Both heli Army helicopter pilots, veterans. Yeah, my son's a helicopter. Businessman. Yeah. Hope he's better than I was. Yeah. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> well said. Good. So Bill Gertz, good, good, good to see you. How are you doing? Nice to see you. How are you doing? Hi, Lauren Fox of US Miss Old. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Jack Hodge. Jack Hodge. Angel George. Nice to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. Peter Maddox. Do you mind if I take a photo with you? Colonel, will you mind joining us? Sure. I'm on the end. Here, should I get a photo me? Why didn't my wife come here? Oppenheimer funds from Austin, Texas, and they're sponsoring the book. Sure. Okay, take it with the iPhone, please? Katie. Thank you. All right, thank you. Right, thank you. You got the iPhone ready? <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll share them with you. Hey, it's very we'll nice to meet you. We've thank you so much for coming. Nice you. you guys, I'm we Shelly can't say enough. Nice, nice to, to see you. How are you? Very well, thank nice you. To meet you. These folks came from Austin, Texas, Texas just to be here tonight. Nice Voted for you once, wish we could do it again. Thank you. I have a son that's at a Oh, is that right? That's bad or good. We won't hold that against you. That's okay. Well, it's a different conference now, so you know, it's not that. I went to Phil Graham his wife and mine, we went to the a and Texas on Thanksgiving. It's exciting. People were crying. They get into it a little bit, don't they? 88,000 people there. Right. Uh, you got Texas the full experience the if you saw the a and Texas game. They were really good to meet you. Admiral W.B. Commission. Nice to see you. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. Oh, you so you're at the end of the Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ignore the man who just walked in. Uh, I'm going to make this very quick because uh, we have better people to talk than I, but I, I got to take advantage. I went to Georgia Tech and Lee Ellis went to University of Georgia, and we have not beaten University of Georgia but one time in the last 10 years. So I just want to make this remark. Lee is a fine guy. He's rather uneducated because of where he went to school. <laughs> On the other hand, I'm a super fine guy and very educated. Uh, very quickly, a long, long time ago in a place far, far away, uh, a group of Americans, uh, many of you are contemporaries of us, but most of you are much younger, uh, had the pleasure of going to graduate school in a terrible place. We were, it took us over six years on average to get out of there. Uh, a lot of it had to do with our academic prowess, which John held us back. And, uh, but most of all, we were in a laboratory, and it, it literally was a laboratory of unique, uh, that was incredibly unique. Uh, I don't think Harvard Business School could quite compare with what we encountered. We learned leadership. We possessed it to a certain extent. We had great leaders, some among you, and you'll be introduced to them shortly. Uh, they were both senior and junior. but. Nobody quite captured that experience in the light of what it was. Leadership principles are universal. They apply to every situation, every situation I've ever been in. And Lee Ellis, the book you're going to receive today, and you're going to hear from Lee, Leading with Honor, took the experiences that we all shared under very difficult circumstances, and he blended them into lessons of leadership from Hanoi. It's just incredible. John McCain and Lee knew each other early on, having been shot down just a few days apart. Uh, it is always an honor to introduce someone who needs no introduction. And if I stayed up in any longer, he'd be throwing something at me. No, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> My dear friend, the Honorable John McCain. <laughs> Thank you, Orson. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. I'm always, uh, I guess that uh, it was Kissinger I said once, he said, a man who needs no introduction, and Kissinger said, yes, but I always enjoy it. <laughs> you know? uh, I thank you all for being here. It's nice to see old friends, and uh, it's uh, <coughs> always a bit nostalgic for me to be with my old friends and uh, compatriots that, uh, as Orson said, we went through very difficult times together, but we also went through times that forged bonds of friendship and honor and dignity that um, I don't think you could uh, replicate uh, in any other way. So I always look back on our experience as, um, as a great honor to have the great privilege of serving in the company of heroes. And a guy who, one of those, just introduced me. Um, the, uh, you know, the funny thing about Marines, they're not very smart, um, but, <laughs> but they can be pretty stubborn, and the, and the Vietnamese found that out. By the way, I often have a, a phrase that I use. I often told Orson, I said, you know, when I graduated from the Naval Academy, I tried to get in the Marine Corps, but my parents were married, and uh, <laughs> uh, it, it always gets a little bit of a chuckle, and that... And that, that used to go over well for a long time. And then, and then a, a, a wonder upon wonders, my son Jimmy joins the Marine Corps at age 18 and, uh, <coughs> and <coughs> served a, a year in Iraq. And uh, as a Lance Corporal, he's now at uh, Texas A&M. And uh, he said, you know, Dad, he said, uh, the uh, Marines are part of the Navy Department, he said. It's the men's department. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I don't tell a joke around him anymore that I that, that I used to. Um, Lee has uh, Lee has written uh, a, a remarkable book, um, and it is about leadership. And the world continues to cry out for American leadership, as we watch <clears throat> thousands of people being slaughtered in Syria today, and the absence of American leadership is conspicuous by its absence. As the people in the Middle East and the Taliban and Al-Qaeda believe that the United States is withdrawing, uh, they, uh, it cries out for leadership. And you know, one of the famous stories, it may be anecdotal, a uh, Taliban prisoner is being interrogated by an American officer, and he says, and the Taliban says, you've got the watches, we've got the time. 
very interesting commentary on the lack of American leadership. Well, I think that Lee articulates in his book uh, the examples of heroism, leadership, men like Jim Stockdale and Bill Lawrence and Robbie Reisner and uh, the names that uh, so many of us remember that who inspired us and um, inspired us to the degree that we were able to do things that we otherwise would not have been able to do with their inspirational leadership. And that's what Lee is all about. That's what his life has been all about. And that's what this book is all about. Americans always need heroes. And we have so many heroes now as a result of the Iraq and Afghan war. But we also have a special generation of leaders as a result of the Vietnam War. You know, it took the American people a long, long time to recover from that war. And um, those of us who came back to serve saw a very changed military than the one that we had been in in 19, late 1960s. And so I'm happy that today we have the finest men and women who are serving in the military today than I have ever seen. It's a successful all-volunteer force. And it's produced leaders like General David Petraeus and others uh, of his quality, Ray Odierno, so many that are, are really outstanding leaders. And most of them got their beginning in trial by fire, guess where, in Vietnam. So I know there are many of my, of my old friends here today, uh, tonight, and there are many who have served their country with honor and distinction. I'm always honored to be in the company of those of you that have and it inspires me to try and do the right thing and stand up for the men and women who are serving. And I will recommend my book, uh, this book, Lee Ellis's book, to my colleagues in the Senate because all of us can never learn enough about leadership. Lee, congratulations. Thank you all for being here. God bless. six pages of notes. <laughs> I have six pages of notes which I'm not going to use. Good evening everyone. Thank you for coming. As I look around the room I see people from my high school class to the United States Senate and everything in between that have crossed my path over the years and who've inspired me and encouraged me along the way. So I thank you for being here. I hope to have time have the the opportunity to speak with each one of you while you're here tonight. We're celebrating the launch of the book, Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. 39 years ago, Orson, Senator McCain, and myself and others came home from that war. It was a long time ago, but the lessons that we learned there are as relevant today as they were in the POW camps. What makes them special, I think, is the fact that they were tried and tested under the most difficult circumstances. We had some remarkable leaders there. Senator McCain has mentioned some earlier, and they were. And it went all the way down. Their example set the pace for me, a junior officer in the camp. And that meant so much. I was there five years, four months, and two weeks. It sounds like a long time. Everett Alvarez, who was here a little bit ago but had to leave because his son is in the hospital, was the longest held POW in our Hanoi group. Eight years, six months. And he returned with honor and has had such a remarkable experience in the years since. I wish he were here. I would love to have him stand up and let us honor him. There are other POWs here with us tonight, uh, several that I haven't seen in a while. Uh, one that uh, I want to mention specially because he arrived in Hanoi the same day I did, and that was Jim Doc Warner, right over there on the cane. We rode the truck. We, we rode the truck into Hanoi together, bouncing along like pigs going to market. And we were going, we thought we might be going to the slaughterhouse, we didn't know. But we ended up in the Hanoi Hilton in a cell that was six and a half feet by seven feet. That's about the size of a small bathroom. Well, it was our bathroom. We had a three-gallon bucket in there. 
But it wasn't just Jim and me, and it wasn't three of us. It was four of us in this room. And that six and a half by seven foot cell was our bathroom, our living room, our bedroom, and our dining room for the next nine months. And that's generally the way our life was. In the winter, it was cold, very cold. And there never seemed to be enough food to keep our bodies warm, especially that first winter. In the summer, it was so hot, we had heat rash. And sometimes we didn't get to take a bath and get cleaned up. And it was not exactly fun. Many of the guys had terrible injuries from their ejections and capture, like Senator McCain. He was probably the most seriously injured of all of us. And he came home with honor. And the story of the opportunities he had to come home early are in the book. And the great courage he showed by staying and coming home in order to shoot down and capture with the rest of us. Well, it was a, a long time, a long period. Some of those that didn't get the medical health, the food wasn't great. There was, for the first four years of the POW situation, there was always capture, torture going on in some camps, in most all the camps at any one time. We didn't write home for several years. Now, I'm telling you this not because we want pity, because that's the last thing POWs want. I'm telling you this because I want you to consider the leadership in a situation like that. Now, that's an example where the leaders have to go under the gun every day that you can look at and really, I think, learn some great lessons about leadership. We were able to endure because we had great resources. We had a heritage of freedom. We had great leadership that had been well-trained and we were well-trained. We had teamwork. We had commitment to each other. There's no better example of commitment to each other and teamwork than that of John Reynolds and Bob Purcell, two Air Force captains, fighter pilots. John had been tortured, had been on, well, actually been on bread and water. He wouldn't give them the statement they wanted. He was tortured. He finally gave them something that was a nothing, but they put him back in his cell with no food because they wanted to break him a little more. Percy found out about it. He was three doors down, and he sent the message by tapping on the wall through our tap code back down to John Reynolds' cell and said, tell John to be looking for a bread drop today during siesta. Well, John didn't know what to expect. But during siesta that day, siesta is when all the guards, not all the guards, but the cooks and the turnkeys go take a nap and it's siesta. They, they really took a siesta. Well, John heard something rattling around in his ceiling. And all of a sudden, his light bulb hanging down the ceiling dropped down. And there was a grinning Percy who had gone through the ceiling in his room, through the barbed wire in the attic, and was above John, and he dropped him some bread. He had kind of taken some the bread that we got to eat and molded it in and dropped it down for John to eat. That's the kind of support and teamwork we had in the POW situation. It was powerful. And the lessons that we brought home with us, that legacy that we took in with us of military leadership and military honor, that lesson is important today for all leaders, and never more so, I believe, than for our country today. We need a revival of that kind of leadership with honor, and we can have it. But there are a couple things it takes. It takes character, and in the book, Chapter two is guard your character, and I share a story of someone who didn't. And it takes courage, because to do the right thing and to do the honorable thing is not easy. It's very difficult. It's painful. You have to lean into the pain of your own fears. I've been a leadership coach and consultant for 15 years. I know that everyone has doubts and fears, and that's what snags them into their leadership faults and problems and challenges. To lead with honor, you have to see what's going on, to know what's right, and sometimes you have to back up and get counsel. 
Senator McCain remembers how we had some tough arguments and discussions about things like should we go on a hunger strike and should we, should we have a writing, uh, what do we call that, a writing moratorium. moratorium. We had tough discussions about that and then the decision was made and we all followed that decision and supported it. But it takes a lot of courage to make those kind of tough decisions. That's what we need today. From the PTA to the high school principal, from the shop steward to the CEO, from the city councilman to the big building over here, the Capitol and the White House, we need leaders who will lead with honor by having the courage to do what they know is right to do, whether it hurts or not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is not easy to do. You, it sounds easy because we all assume we have good character and we'll do the right thing. I'm telling you, it's not easy. I'd like to close with pulling from a great, uh, one of the great movies of all time, one of the best bestsellers of the world, Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. In the trailer, it comes on the screen in big words. It says, there's no freedom without sacrifice. There is no victory without loss. There is no glory without suffering. And I want to add one more to that list. There is no honor without courage. Leading with honor is the one thing that can turn this country back to the way that we think it ought to be. And that's the message we want to get out. Do the right thing for the country. Do the right thing for your duty. Lean into the pain and just go do it. Don't be afraid to do it. Just do it and we'll all be proud of you. We're all hungry for that kind of leadership. Well, tonight I want to ask, I want to thank you again for being here and I want to ask you to continue your efforts to spread that message. For the POWs, we know that our message was returned with honor. The story of Senator McCain's return and how he didn't come home early but returned with honor has always been a great inspiration to me. Thank you for that example. Thank you for being here with us tonight. That message, return with honor, let's twist it just a little bit for the American society, the American culture, for all of us. Lead with honor. Lead with honor. When we get that message in our mind, this country will return to honor. And we'll all be blessed greatly by that. God bless you all and thank you for being here. We have several POWs here tonight. I know Senator McCain has got to leave. I want to ask the POWs, Jim Warner right here to come down, Bob Hanton to come down, uh, let's see, I mean Tom Hanton, uh, Jerry Van Anzi, where's my list? I left it over there. I got Jerry Van Anzi. Who's the other one here? Jerry's hiding back there. Here's Jerry. Who's the other POW that's here? F. Alvarez? Okay, he's gone. Come on up and they'll take our picture. Here we go. And how about one if we take a space so we can see the title of the book? Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, there's a book. There's a book. Okay. I'll get on the other side. Perfect. Thank you. Write it right here at me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again. I have a picture of you. Wonderful. Okay, okay. Right here. Jimmy. Here we go.
Thank you so much. There you go. It's good to see you. Yes, sir. Thank you again. Well, that's we tried to sign on the page, but you would Oh, yeah, yeah. Can, can I have a special page for you? Yes. Um, no, you should sign with all your buddies, don't you think? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I'm the, they're the heroes. I'm just a, oh the gosh. young kid. There you go. You're welcome. Incredibly. Hope you enjoy the book. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much.